Hello, good day everyone. So today I want to discuss to you chapter 2 entitled Public Speaking and Reports in the Information Age. But before that, let's do have first our chapter objectives. The first one is appreciate the importance and history of public speaking. Number two, speak in public in an organized and competent manner. And number three, analyze speeches and identify perceived strength and weaknesses. Lesson one, public speaking. Public speaking is a process, an act, an art of making speech before an audience. So here it says that public speaking is a process. Why is it there is a process? It is because we are not just merely talking with things, but we do also have to organize it in a well manner. To perform it because there is a word here an act right okay and an art of making speech before an audience so it means to say you are in the in front of many people or known as crowd of people the second one is Public speaking involves communicating information before a large audience. Okay? So you are talking about information. You are giving details. You are giving information. Ideas. Before a large audience. It means to say, not only one person, to two are involved, but a large audience the third one is what makes public speaking different than just a talking to a crowd of people is in the way information is conveyed so as we have observed public speaking is an act where the messages the information are well delivered and conveyed In public speaking, the information is purposeful and meant to inform, influence, or entertain a group of listeners. Here, the information is purposeful. It means to say, the large number of people uh, are after from something which is important or essential meant to inform okay influence or entertain a group of listener okay so there is a two an acclaimed public speakers here named Dale Carnegie and SNWIN 2007. Based from them, public speaking is public utterance, public issuance of the man himself. Therefore, the first thing both in time and importance is that the man should be and think and feel things that are worthy of giving forth okay so based from the previous slide public speaking is purposeful which is meant that they are worthy of giving forth okay for public utterance 
public is once of the man himself. Okay? So we do have also here the importance of public speaking cannot be denied. Okay? Great speeches have moved nations to war and revolution for they inspire and move people to act. Okay, so aside from it entertains people, it also move people to act. Okay, it inspires people. Also, the most successful and most powerful people over the centuries have mastered the ability to communicate effectively okay so take note of that the most successful and most powerful people over the centuries have mastered the ability to communicate effectively so for example of this the president okay ambassadors representatives motivational speakers so they become successful in their lives that is because they have already mastered the ability to communicate effectively public speaking humans ability to communicate using formalized a system of language sets us apart from other living creatures on the earth okay so public speaking is different from talking it is because you should have to formalize okay the language you should have to organize your thought before you deliver to the crowd so that is why communicate using formalize a system of language okay it requires you to both know content and be able to perform a skill well for the greeks it was a political in nature and the spoken word was thought to be such important skill that citizens were taught the art of rhetoric okay so for them it was a political in nature so for example if uh, the president or the one who actually rules the nation then he must have to master to communicate effectively or public speaking Early theories of communication viewed public speaking as a series of one-way messages sent from speaker to audience. Okay. So, early theories viewed that public speaking as a series of one-way. When I say one-way, the messages sent from speaker to audience. So, there is no feedback okay in fact however the audience participates along with the speaker in creating shared meaning and understanding so if the listeners or shall I say audience are something to do to share with their understanding then they are allowed to okay so that is why audience participates along with the speaker in creating shared meaning and understanding. Okay. Unlike early theorists, they viewed public speaking as a one-way messages. Okay. Or a one-way communication. Because it only sends messages from speaker to audience 
the speaker's ideas and values are tested and refined through interaction with the audience and listeners knowledge and understanding are modified through interaction with the speaker okay so this is actually the example the ted talk okay Thus, public speaking is a continuous communication process in which messages and signals circulate back and forth between speaker and listener. Okay, here it says that public speaking is a continuous communication. Unlike in the early theories, they only viewed public speaking as a series of one-way messages. Here, it says here that public speaking is a continuous communication process in which messages and signals circulate back and forth. It means to say there is a response coming from the listeners. Okay, so not only the speaker is the one who is talking, but also the, spe the, the listeners. Great speeches have created hope in perilous situation and have people change their minds about the world and their places in it. So if we talk about this line, probably we could say that this type of speaker is a motivational speaker. Okay. Have created hope in perilous situation and had people change their minds about the world and their places in it so the speaker is trying to give hope give us more understanding about hope okay about hope over despair Okay, from Nick Bujizik. Okay, so it, he's actually uh, a motivational speaker. Also, says that adjustments are necessary along the way because life is not always rosy, but it is always worth living. So we have to deal of what we have in life okay that is based from nick bujisik you have also to adjust you also have to know how to adjust in every situation okay so let's proceed to the short history of public speaking History of Public Speaking Most well-known public speaking traditions come from the West, specifically Greco-Roman tradition. Okay, so don't forget that. The Greeks studied the art of rhetoric on the island of Cilicely and it began with a practical need. Okay, so this is actually the map. So if you go back here, it says here that Greeks studied the art of rhetoric on the island of Sicily. And it began with a practical need. Okay, so it didn't happen unintentional but due to a practical need okay their government had been overthrown 
a new democracy was formed and the Greek courts was filled with clashing property claims. Okay, so we do have here Korax, the Greek picture of rhetoric. City says, Korax student. Okay, so don't forget that. Greek, Greek teacher of rhetoric is Korax. And his student, Theseus, proceeded to help citizens when it came to speaking persuasively in courts of law. And this led to the expansion of the teaching of rhetoric to mainland, to mainland Greece. Okay, so it came to speaking persuasively in court. So that is why it happened in a practical need. It is because they really actually want to apply it in courts of law. Okay, and this led to the expansion of the teaching of rhetoric to mainland Greece so we do have here a basic speech has three parts don't forget this one the first one is the introduction okay the second one is the evidence and the third one is the conclusion and this simple organization of speeches has endured throughout the ages okay Protagoras Protagoras is a famous Greek philosopher known as the father of debate okay general ideas the father of debate Protagoras who made his students argue for and against issues of the day to sharpen their reasoning skills and appreciate different sides of an issue. Aristotle he is also a famous Greek philosopher, the father of modern communication, wrote a treatise entitled Rhetoric in the Use of Persuasive Speaking. Okay. Logos, meaning logical argument. Pathos, emotional argument. And the third one is ethos, the speaker's credibility. Okay, so we do have another line here from Greenville Glacier of 2009 and successful methods in public speaking. The great orators of the world did not regard eloquence as simply an endowment of nature but applied themselves diligently to cultivating their powers of expression. Okay, so eloquence. So that is based from Greenville Glacier of two thousand nine. Demosthenes, the most famous ancient Greece orator had many flaws in public speaking especially his stammer and weak voice so although he had many flaws in public speaking but still he remained as one of those famous ancient Greece orators So, if we do have Greece 
ancient orator. We do have also Roman. Okay? Name Cicero, the most famous Roman orator, whose eloquence was described as resistless torrent. Okay? A state man who argued that the teaching of rhetoric should be considered an art form and that this could be useful in all practical and public affairs. So, Cicero is one of the most famous or Roman orators. Okay, whose eloquence was described as resistless torrent. Okay, was believe that in order to prepare a speech one should first think of one's listeners and their interests and to use certain strategies to engage the audience so based from his experience based from him in order to prepare a speech the speaker should also think of one's listeners and their interests okay so you should have to know what kind of audience do you have and also their interest Quintilian Quintilian is a Roman lawyer and educator a public speaker should be ethical okay Morial 2010 The ideal speaker was a good man speaking well. A good speaker is ethical and of high character. And speaking well meant being well informed and presenting the speech effectively. So based from him, the ideal speaker was a good man speaking well. And at the same time, a good speaker is ethical and of high character. Okay. So here in the Philippines, I guess. Women were not allowed to speak publicly during these times for a long time. So this is actually the cultures that we have here in the Philippines. That women were not allowed to speak publicly during these times for a long time. The Babaylan are allowed to speak in public for the purpose of religious rituals. Okay. However, during the pre-colonial times in the Philippines, these Babaylan are women priestesses of the community. Okay. So... Philippines has its own tradition of public speaking. It is called differently from different regions. Okay, so here among the Tagalogs, we do have the Karagatan. The Karagatan is a game wherein young men and women duel with each other using words when it comes to talking about love okay Huego de Prenda is a game used to entertain guests and the Biri family during weeks during the American period so we do have Balagtasan became more widely known in order to honor Francisco Balagtas, a well-known Filipino poet. Okay, so if the Greece and Roman have a debate and argument here in the Philippines, we do have the Balagtasan. Okay? It's an ordinary debate, except that one has to reason and argue in verse. 
two master poets are assigned to defend the pros and cons of an issue. And a broad of judges seats to determine the winner. Okay. Americans brought public education in the Philippines. They also brought their public speaking traditions. They distinguished themselves from the Spanish by using English language as a medium. Because of this, the Filipino public speaking tradition brings with it the flamboyant, poetic manner that flourished under the Spanish colonialization and the simpler methodic, methodical, methodical public speaking traditions of the West, which is based on the Greek and Roman tradition. Okay, so since they are the ancient ancient, and the first who actually who practice public speaking, so that is where uh, public speaking nowadays are based from or derived from. Okay, from Greek and Roman tradition. Don't forget that. Okay, so we do have the speech writing process. Okay. So here we do have audience analysis, purpose of the speech, select a topic, narrowing down a topic, and of course, gathering data. And after that, you should have to select a speech pattern, prepare an outline, create the body of the speech, prepare the introduction, prepare the conclusion. And after that, you have to edit and or revise and rehearse. Okay? So that is why it says there that you should have to know what are type of listeners do you have and at the same time their interests. Okay, in order for you to deliver uh, the appropriate speech for them. Okay, so we do have here audience analysis, the first concept, right? Profile of your target audience. Okay. Know your audience first. It says there. Demography, situation, and psychology. The second one is the purpose. Okay. The purpose. When I say the purpose, what is your speech for? Okay. What? is your speech for your purpose first one is informative speech so if you want to inform the people or the audience then this type of speech is suit to you the informative speech the second one is entertainment speech so if you want to entertain people your audience then this type of speech is best suit to you and the third one is persuasive speech okay so if you want to persuade someone like uh, like an offering uh, something to them then persuasive speech is best and suit for you okay so here about the topic the first one is the main point of your speech okay so what is your main idea what is the main point of your speech the second one is can be determined after determining the purpose so if you know the purpose then 
to could able to make the topic so that is why you should have a first go back to your purpose what is this speech for and after that you can able to make a topic okay the next one is narrowing down the topic make the main idea more specific and focus so you have to support you have to make an outline you have to make a supporting detail for your main point or main idea okay so that is narrowing down if it is necessary to give information or to give samples examples then match better so that is that is why make the main idea more specific and focused okay data gathering the next one so you should have also to collect ideas information sources and references relevant or related to your specific topic which are only based from real experience and facts okay that is data gathering you should have to collect ideas and information So we do have also the next one the writing pattern okay structures that helps organize the ideas related to the topic if you need an outline then much better you can do outlining that helps organize the ideas related to the topic okay okay so this is actually the outline here are list that shows the relationship of your data so if you have your data already then you can use the outlining okay so which is could serves as the one will explain and help you elaborate more about the data that you have gathered so this is outlining okay hierarchical list so it means to say from the very top going down okay or in reverse that is outlining body of the speech okay focus on one central idea give examples explanation and details so that is the body of speech body of the speech and the next one is the introduction foundation of the speech and first impression okay so in this in this part you must have to you must have to think that your goal is to get the attention first of your audience okay so this is actually the first impression and serves as the foundation of your speech so you should have to to be firm of your introduction here in conclusion restates main idea and summarizes the speech okay we do have also the editing and revising this is the time the writer the speaker is correcting his work as a whole so correcting errors so you should have to edit and revise if there is any so that is editing and revising
Okay, now let's proceed to lesson two. The tools needed in critical and in critical or creative reports. Okay. The first is the best practices of public speaking. Great speakers have been called hypnotic, magnetic, and charismatic. And it's not just because of the compelling message, but because of the captivating manner. They deliver these speeches as well. Okay, because of their manner, because of their attitude, and delivering their speeches. So that is why uh, the people or the listeners are being attracted okay to the speaker so here in introduction we do have the first impression last okay so this is actually very true first impression last the beginning of your public speech is the most important part yes aside from that you should always instill to your mind that your goal is to get the attention of your listener. The first 5 to 10 seconds of you and your speech are crucial. So sometimes we feel nervous, right? Because it is not actually easy. And based on the study, Based on the study, public speaking is one of the most uh, fearful thing to do. Okay? Public speaking. So that is why the first 5 to 10 seconds of you and your speech are crucial. It is the foundation of your speech. Okay? So introduction serves as the introduction. Serves rather as your foundation of your speech. Primary goal is to get the attention of your audience. Okay. How about the performance? Here, speeches are performances. Yes, because you have to perform it. You have to actually stand before the large number of people. Okay, delivered best if they have authenticity and earnestness the third one is honest and sincerity response is equal to response response plus relate is equal to strongly response sense of humor helps break the eyes okay Showing of vulnerability and concern makes the audience feel closer to the speaker. Okay, so as a speaker, if you can able to relate it personally or based from your real experience, then much better. So that is why showing of vulnerability and concern makes the audience feel closer to the speaker. Okay. It is much better to give examples based from real life situation and experiences. So we do have here planned the speech. Okay, so it is important to express oneself in an expressive and articulate manner. Okay. Choose words carefully, be sensitive. So, why do we need to be more sensitive with our words? It is because sometimes words are actually could able to uh, to bring hurt to someone. So, that is why we should have to be careful of our words. Okay? Builds on the foundation of logos, pathos, and ethos. Based from... Aristotle, okay. One must also nurture a speaking style that is effective. 
speaking style varies from one person to another okay so we do have different or various uh, styles from one person to another okay here is the eye contact one way to be authentic is to make eye contact with the audience and to speak in a manner that touches them okay so if you are uh, in front of the people then you should have to maintain eye contact with your audience okay your it is actually a very nice way of communicating someone uh, trying to to get their attention or catching their attention through your eye contact it helps engaging the audience yes and the third one is if one is having a hard time making eye contact try to pick out three people from the audience and make a mental triangle from one's position and make eye contact with them instead of the rest of the people in the room so okay so if you have difficulty in maintaining eye contact with your audience then what is being advised here then at unless you will get three people okay and make a mental triangle from one's position and make eye contact with them okay it's a very nice idea If one is truly hesitant on making eye contact, one may look at people's forehead which creates the illusion of making eye contact without actually doing it. Okay, so if you are hesitant or of doing eye contact with someone, then you can able to to see or to look directly to their forehead. Okay, without actually doing it. Uh, that creates the illusion of making eye contact if one is comfortable making eye contact pick out people who seem friendly or accommodating to look to look at, so that one feels confident and at ease okay that is how you can practice eye contact the speaking style is style okay the speaking style different people have different style that is very true one can only find one's personal style through constant practice okay so if you are practicing constantly public speaking so you can able to make yourself uh, as a as an effective communicator okay one can be as calm, trustworthy, and reasonable with their hand gestures. Seem more open and thoughtful. Or one can burst with passion and boom bast with pointing and punching in the air to make a strong impression. Okay, so if we notice some of the orators, some of the speakers, they're actually uh, practicing and aiming applying some gestures okay to capture and help themselves to get the attentions of their audience it because it brings impact to their listener okay so we do have here the hand gestures hand gestures can create as much of an impact as the content of the message okay so this is what i've said earlier must always look smooth and natural than stiff and robotic so it is better to act normally right can be useful signpost in making a point although although intuitive in nature it can be extremely useful if used effectively
note that is culturally informed. Some of the gestures are rude, which are actually not should not be applied. Okay. It is important to be able to match the gestures to one's audience. So, we should always go back to the audience. Know their interests. Know the people. Okay. And apply some gestures relevant to the topic. How to record the speech or recording the speech. Okay, so some of this is actually our practicing nowadays. Videotape speakers is one of the best practices in public speaking. Then, let them watch themselves for feedback. Okay, so this is actually uh, one way of rehearsing yourself uh, for public speaking. You should have to record your practices in public speaking. Okay, they can watch for flows and mannerisms so they can correct it. They will observe their feelers such as mm and mm that are distracting. One can see gestures that need to be eliminated. So that is why we have to videotape or record our public speaking intended for corrections. Okay? Also to see if one is smiling. The second one is peer evaluation. So... You are with someone that serves as your evaluator. Okay, feedback from people is important and a great tool to improve one's speech and speaking tile, styles. Teachers, coaches, and peers could provide feedback when it comes to the effectivity and impact of one's speech. Observations can range from one's posture facial expressions and general appearance okay so that is peer evaluation and can be done alone while rehearsing in front of a mirror so we do have here the appearance it is it is important to look credible and worthy of respect okay so well groomed okay one's dresses should match the kind of audience one wants to impress and not also not only to the audience but also it suits to the program or the occasion first impression last okay you should always instill that to your mind and the first five to ten seconds of presenting oneself is crucial Okay, about the clothing, usually suit and tie, suit and tie for men. Sweet. Usually sweet, actually suit and tie for men uh, at, the, at the most formal level or at the very least long sleeves, bottom down shirts, slacks, and leather shoes while for women a pantsuit or a formal coat and skirt ensemble or a long dress for formal events could also depends on the tradition and culture of one's country or region okay in our country the use of slack and barong for men and filipiniana for women are acceptable Okay, good grooming. It is a must. Extends from one's hair to one's nails. Okay, as long as one's looks neat and clean, should satisfy most of the audience requirements. Also, one should know the cultural expectation of the audiences, and some audiences may require 
heavy makeup for women or hijab or high heels okay this actually hijab is for Muslim people visual age visual aids okay we are living in a 21st century era wherein it has become uh, the rigor the rigor to have visual age such as infographics powerpoint presentations video or audio clips which are acceptable and commendable as long as it is relevant to the topic Okay, so an example of that is the PowerPoint presentation. Ensure that the, tech, the text is not too small. 24 is the acceptable phone size or larger. Should be in dark colors for easy reading. Not text heavy and of course visually oriented with the use of photographs, illustrations, charts, and other visual. 6 by 6 rule. No more than six bullets, and each bullet should be no more than six words. PowerPoint presentation. It is good to use animation, but it would be best if this feature would not be overused. One slide for every two minutes is a good rule of thumb. One must rehearse while using the presentation and check first the equipment before the speech there are also things to consider that will help us to deliver our communication or messages to our audience effectively and these are the handouts okay it would be it would be best for the audience so that they could follow your speech in case they are lost their attention during the speech they could go back to the topic by looking at the handouts. Okay, feedback. The speaker should give attention to the nonverbal language of the audience. Okay. The nonverbal language of the audience are their feedback to the speaker. Through their non-verbal language, the speaker could see if the audience, audiences are enjoying the speech or getting bored or they are agreeing or not. Okay, so that is, we could actually able to know or understand their actions. Based on their actions, then it serves as feedback here. Okay, so if they feel sleepy, then we could able to conclude that they are getting bored while listening to our speeches so that is why we should always uh, make our audience enjoy and could agree to our speech okay the speaker should be more responsive and sympathetic to match the audience's visual cues use okay conclusion so we do have here the conclusion restates the main idea emphasize the message and primary goal is to leave the audience with memorable statement okay so if you can able to give a, a phrase or a line then much better that serves as your conclusion that will help them uh, their idea okay retain or last for a very long time in their mind so that is why we should have to to leave the audience with memorable statement okay public speaking is a dynamic performance that is meant to disseminate information create greater awareness and evoke emotions in the audience it has been used to promote human rights on the street and to create policies in the government. Most important speeches in the world have had material effect and made a significant change in the world 
and these still affect the world today long after the speakers have already gone okay so that's all and uh, thank you very much for listening i do hope that you have enjoyed my discussion about public speaking okay so that's all thank you and more power